hello and welcome to Midwest Bramble. Um, you can call me Bramble. Uh, today I thought I'd start off this channel by talking about books that I read in December and what I plan to read in January. Um, I got a lot of people on Amino telling me that I should do videos on my book reviews. Um, so here I am begging, which is Amino. Let's get started. One of the first books I read in December was America Bewitched, The Story of Witchcraft After Salem by Owen Davies. And this book is basically a history of American witch trials after the Salem witch trials. Um, a lot of them have to do with things like um, assault charges, um, defamation, and things along that line, but of course there's also unfortunate events of murder as well. Now this book also talks about um, different beliefs from the different ethnic groups in North, in the United States, such as, um, of course, the Native Americans, the European Americans, and um, also African Americans, how they kind of intermixed and how they influenced one another over time, for better or worse. Um, and how that sort of influenced relations between the different groups as well, which is really interesting. Um, it talks about different beliefs of witchcraft, such as wish balls. It also talks about different um, book magic practices in the United States. Um, different charms that I'll talk about. Um, we saw earlier on, I flipped to a page, that there was the Cedar Square. But there's also um, charms for getting guns to stop working or how to get a gun to start working again. Just different things that are really unique to American witchcraft beliefs. Um, and these last, this last chapter actually talks about more modern witchcraft beliefs um, such as Wicca coming to America. Um, people such as Starhawk and Sibylik, and their um, just sort of effects on American witchcraft. So if you live in America, this is a really good book to have to learn about our history regarding witchcraft, as well as um, how it's had its uh, hidden effects on our culture, which I think is really interesting. So I do recommend this book if anyone wants to get it. Um, this was a used book, which is why it's so tattered here. So yeah, this is a good book to get. Next book I read was Skin Spirits, The Spiritual and Magical Uses of Animal Parts by Lupa. And I did read her first book, which is Fang and Fur and Blood and Bones. And I wrote read this one a couple of years ago. So this is more of the theory behind working with with um, animal spirits, whereas this one has more practical information, like how to make oh, like a dancing skin, how to make different bags, um, how to make uh, jewelry, and different things along with those lines. So I don't really think this book is necessary unless you really like the author. Um, it's kind of just building off of what she talks about more in her first book. Um, I also read Witches, Werewolves, and Fairy Shapeshifters in Astral Doubles in the Middle Ages by um, this author, and he is French and French has a lot of vowels, <laughs> and so I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. There's lots of different ways it can be pronounced, but I am not going to offend any French listeners here. Um, so this book is also more of a historical look. It looks at a lot of um, very specifically um, Norse stories as well as Germanic information, but also takes information from all over Europe, such as Italy and, um, of course, France. 
So this book kind of looks at more of what the soul is. Um, he talks about the three souls in Norse belief, such as the Philgia, um, the Hoover, and the Hammer. Um, and then he also talks a little bit about the Fetch. He posits some interesting information about fairies in here being similar to the Philgia. In Celtic lore, um, I think it's a little loose there. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, he does say that he needs to do more further research to um, further prove that point, but it's something that he just thought of in his own research. Um, and then he also talks about all the different things that witches would do as they sent out their double into spirit flight, such as shape-shifting and um, going to the Sabbath. Uh, he talks about the Benandanti of uh, Italy and the wolf of the cow that some babies are born with over their faces, um, how you are born a witch in folklore, like the different um, signs that a child may end up being. Um, ooh, excuse me, getting wild. Um, how um, a child may have Clody towards magical abilities or um, interests through certain signs when they are born. Um, and then it goes a little bit more into the nightmare and how that connects with um, such as like high writing. And then we also get into um, wills in here, which was interesting. Now, it does talk, like you see St. Augustine here, he does talk a lot about. Um, Christian conversion in the Middle Ages, because this is a lot of when this sort of thing was happening. So he talks about how um, Christian authorities did um, try to cover a lot of this, demonize these sort of pagan, more pagan beliefs. Um, so this is a really interesting book with a ton of information. If uh, soul flight or hedge writing is something that you're interested in, this has a lot of good folkloric and um, some historical uh, accounts of beliefs regarding that sort of thing. And the appendices, which uh, I find is fairly rare in books, um, to actually be good, these are actually fairly informative as well. It has different beliefs from like Lithuania that he builds upon and um, like Finnish and Estonian. Oh, ancient Greece. So lots of different European beliefs. A uh, thing on a trial for werewolves. Just really, really interesting information that I think if uh, astral travel, um, hedge riding, soul flight, that sort of thing is interesting to you, um, this one could be a good book for some historical background. The last book I read for. Um, the book club on Pagan Witches Amino. It's The Witch's Path, Advancing Your Craft at Every Level by Thorn Mooney. And I absolutely adore Thorn Mooney. So in this book, it's more so to help you kind of break through to, well, I don't know what to do next. I don't know where to go, what I should be doing. Um, I've kind of got my basics or um, I'm kind of just in a rut. So, and she kind of just gives a breakdown of some some sort of basic of ideas and then like talks about different uh, thoughts and perspectives on witchcraft from different traditions. Um, and kind of really gets you to think about what exactly your own thoughts and ideas are regarding witchcraft. It kind of challenges them a little bit, but like in a good way. And at the end of each chapter, she has these exercises. So air would be for your beginner who has their foundations and kind of an idea about which, what witchcraft is, but doesn't know, really know where to go next. So she kind of does that. This is for people who are busy and just don't know how to integrate witchcraft into their busy life. So this that would be fire. Water is for those who just don't really know how to go deeper. And then earth is for people more like her who are priestesses have been in the community for a long time, 
priests or priestesses, excuse me, have been in the community for a long time or fairly well experienced and are just kind of stuck in a rut. And I think I read through all of these and I thought that they were really um, good for the purposes that they were written for. Um, so she goes into sacred space. Let me see if I can find... Yes, so the devotion section is really good. It's not just for people who um, work with gods, which I think is really nice, inclusive way to do things. So she talks about God touched, um, my worship, patron deities, um, but also she also goes into like just working with the land. That's something that I do a lot of. These are all really great, and I liked working through these questions. She talks about the sacred self, and instead of going to deity, um, kind of doing more of a worship of yourself. Um, I don't know if that's worship's really the correct word there, but it's a lot of connecting more so with yourself as a divine being. And again, we have these exercises. Ritual and Magic, and really it's just a really great book. If you're of any one of those groups, you can see that I've kind of earmarked a few things. Blasphemous, I know. And I just, this was probably one that I will turn back to when I am bored. It kind of reminds me, if you have read um, Weave the Liminal by uh, Lord Tempest Zakroff. If you've read that, it's kind of similar to that, but I think this is a little more focused on getting you past those blockages that you're having. Um, and what I really like about the study section, if we get back to that, is she really focuses more on um, being an advanced reader instead of looking for advanced books and how to read with critical thinking skills and how that's really going to help you more with um, finding books and reading things that are actually going to challenge you so yes again this i think is a really wonderful book if you're looking for something to read going into january i've already started a couple of books um American Brujeria, excuse me, American Brujeria, Modern Mexican American Folk Magic by J. Allen Cross. Now, I am not Mexican American. I am not Mexican. <laughs> but we are reading this in book club, and I think it's really good for us to be reading and learning about other cultural practices so we understand them more and the perspectives from which they're coming from and when they say, don't appropriate from us. So, reading this um, so far has been really enlightening. I didn't, I don't really know much about Mexican American folk magic. I am, well, I grew up Catholic, so a lot of this stuff is really familiar to me, um, such as like the prayers. Obviously, I grew up with those. Um, I know later on in here he talks about praying the rosary, which I grew up with, but like the more um, cultural specific stuff is really interesting to me. And I've only gotten to chapter two, through chapter two in this book, so I don't know a whole lot yet, but um, I probably won't be finishing this for a while since this is with the book club. The other book I'm currently reading is by Rust of Nail and Brick of Thorn. The Theory and Practice of Effective Home Warding by Althea Sebastiani. Um, I found her on Instagram and just kind of decided, well, it's, it's a cheaper book, so I'll pick it up. There's a lot of people wondering about other protection magic books. So I am almost done with this one, and I have a book on the way called Spirit Conjuring for Witches by Foster Barabas. So I'm kind of wondering how that's going to show up. I have a few other books that I'm hoping to get to this month but I haven't bought yet so this is kind of where I am at uh, in February I'll let you know how this book is it probably won't be until March for American Brujeria so that is just sort of what I have been reading 
Um, if you have any questions about the books that I have talked about, that I have finished, go ahead and ask them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer as best as I can. Of course, I don't know everything, so it'll it'll just be, I'll try to point you in a direction to someone who might be able to help you better if I can't, but yeah. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you soon about traditional witchcraft. Bye!